What you waving at me for? Roll Tide, Roll Tide. What do you mean it's not a real draft? So I did not post a recap from last week. Honestly, what happened is I ended up filming, looked back on the footage, and a lot of it, in my opinion, I just seemed like I was like tired or like my brain was kind of like foggy, fuzzy. I was maybe multitasking, something like that. And it was also really dark. So the combo of the two just seemed really like meh to me because um, I did start filming it a little bit too late as the sun was going down. So I still kept all the initial footage that I had and had um, like edited down of just either the games that I watched the most intense last week um, or followed the most closely along with a couple of the biggest plays or just really nice plays from last week. So to keep the video a little shorter for this week, I think I'm only going to show just what some of the biggest plays in my opinion were and I'm just kind of kind of going to kind of mush these two weeks together. So starting off last week, a game that I did want to watch a ton was the Miami Cincy game. Um, and here's the deal, as we know, um, regardless of how this game turned out, honestly, regardless of how much of a streak, keeping it up, the Dolphins do or do not do. Biggest thing that came out of that game was, of course, Tua and his head injury and whatever the extent that is. Obviously, best wishes to him and just hope nothing but safety for him for sure for the rest of the season um he's so young so to have like two big whacks um in two weeks back to back is honestly really scary um and then of course as we now know um after this last weekend that i think bridgewater also got injured and might be out for who knows how long so i was 4-0 um coming into week five and i did just take my first l but you know y'all gotta stay a little humble so buffalo and baltimore uh josh allen and Diggs stay super steady for me even though Diggs is not necessarily popping off every single week um, which we will see into week five. Okay, moving on to uh, Jaguars and Eagles. We now know that the Eagles are literally 5-0, cannot be stopped. Um, Jags are kind of hit or miss for me. They have some really, really nice plays because they do have some incredible talent going on on their receiving end for sure. But just the consistency between them and of course Trevor Lawrence isn't necessarily there. Um, Sanders, I think. Oh, he also had a super big week this last week um, on week four. He got his career high. I think he also had two touchdowns, even if he had the one. I'm not going to go back and look it up. I want to say two really bad. It might have been one, but he did have his career high. I know for sure in that game, someone else who had their career high was... Hawkinson finally having a huge week. He has pretty consistent weeks, but he had a huge one and I definitely did need it and it was exciting. Of course, there were a lot of just injuries and people who were out on Detroit. So I assumed that his um, usage was gonna be a lot higher and it was. So that was exciting to have two people that I played um, in two different positions. Both have literally their career highs on weeks that I used them. I thought that that was really fun and yeah, I think the big comment, I mean, you can see in a lot of these plays that what I was noticing in week four is how many big breakaway plays there were. Just guys really catching like huge passes or people just having a lot of this one was crazy for Hawkinson for sure. Wow, when the tight end breaks out like that and he did almost make it into a really long run, but just a lot of long runs. I feel like I saw from week four. Um, for sure, people were moving. So, and another one, there was that other Hawkinson one. Wow, I have so much footage from this game. Oh, I remember because it was the highest offensive game yet in the first four weeks. And let's pause for two seconds and talk about the fact that Detroit has the number one offense so far, or at least through the start of week five, they have the number one offense, or had the number one offense in the league, yet had, I think, 32 out of 32 for defense. So you're like, like just offense alone doesn't win the games, for sure. That's literally like the proof is in the pudding with that one. Um, a game I didn't really care to watch, Denver and Las Vegas, snooze fest. 
defense that he'd really like to be able to play right now. Third down and three. Now we're into some of those biggest plays from last week. This Debo Samuel slant. He's just moving. Right, as they're saying, he's just breaking away from multiple tackles. When you miss multiple tackles and get your ass in the end zone, it was literally like God wanted you to score. It might be an interception, but instead it's high, can't get it. Now it's a poor angle and tackle by Taylor Rapp, and then it continues. Here on the other end, there's a missed one right there by Jalen Ramsey, and so, you know, what should have been at worst a, a catch should and maybe a few more yards after this, right there with Rapp making the tackle, he gets more, and then Ramsey misses as well. Yeah. So Kansas City and Tampa's two teams I definitely don't super duper care to watch. However, um, some crazy catches, or I could say at least one very interesting touchdown. This one right here. <laughs> Dead words alert, the little beep boop. Uh, to get in there, just kind of a funky one. Um, but he also popped off for me too. I'm like, did he also get two touchdowns or was it one? I definitely had a few people just had a really, really good um, last week. And then there was a crap ton of interceptions um, also happening last week too. I It would have been like three minutes of footage to even just put all of them in, but I feel like that was happening a lot. Green Bay not necessarily getting in much of a flow yet, in my opinion. Incredible quarterback. Not really getting in a flow in the same way I say Jags not really getting in a flow from the teams that we've seen so far. Um, Kyler Murray is super hit or miss while we were just cruising through the games. I thought I was going to be able to follow them. Again, now we're back to Denver and Las Vegas. Game I didn't really care about. However, this play was indeed very, very nice. Again, we're just missing multiple tackles. Really making sure we get in the end zone. Robertson with a beautiful one. And I can't remember if this is the play where they said that that was Gordon's fourth fumble already of the season. You know, like four weeks in, four fumbles, one per, one per week, basically. That's a bad average, sir. That is a bad average. Some week five highlights, like I said, Cooper Cup is just nasty as always. There are very few times that that man gets the ball and has a touchdown that is not beautiful or well-deserved in my opinion. He manages to make a lot of catches where people are absolutely on his ass. And he is pretty solid in that regard. This was a weird interception for me. I think the whole comment was, did we actually catch that? And the, the freaking tackle in the end zone. Coach celebrations, those are always cute. Love to see him, love to see him. This catch, ooh, the little pointed toe. Legs coming together nice. You just see the turf fly. Beautiful catch, honestly. Buffalo, Pittsburgh, poor. Pittsburgh, they are going through it. And let's talk about Davis right here. Okay, um, so Diggs was not the person of heaviest usage in this game at all, but this touchdown and then along with the other one are both nasty, like good, impressive. I was like, holy crap, if you had him on your bench, oops, yikes, bomb. All the way down, we have another big reach catch. Love to see that we had pickings um, a couple weeks ago and another nice outreached one here. Again, that shoulder mobility, boys. Woo! Very nice. And getting a handle on pulling it in before going down. Again, with the other bomb to Davis and their little tap dance in the end zone, trying to strip it back and forth from each other. And obviously it uh, turned out to be a touchdown. So pretty good two weeks. Um, I did lose this fantasy week, like I said. So now I'm four and one, um, but that is okay. You gotta take a L. I'm really bad at losing. Like I have a little bit of woo -hoo energy right now because I'm super caffeinated, but um, I don't take L's well. I really, really don't. So I wonder if you guys can hear that helicopter. Life in LA, Hollywood specifically. The games that I am going to be most curious to watch in week six, if I'm looking, 
probably gonna be Vikings and Dolphins. I would originally say I'm not gonna mind, but now if Dolphins really are on their third string quarterback, because I do not know how long they're planning on keeping Tua out. Um, Ravens and Giants could be cool. I mean, Giants are still sitting four and one. Steelers, I wish, were getting on a little bit more of a rhythm, but since they aren't, Bills and Chiefs should be super solid. So should Cowboys and Eagles. Those are both games where we have people only sitting at 4-1, other than, of course, the Eagles actually sitting at 5-0. Yeah, so, and what's nice is that the Cowboys and Eagles are the 5-20 p.m. game, so you don't have to worry about missing any highlights or anything exciting in that game, as it will be the only one on at that time. So again, I hope you are healthy, blessed, don't stress, it's just fantasy. And I will catch you guys in the next one.